Right. It's the part of the show where I eat breakfast and talk about chronic illness. So, get ready. Um, today I'm going to talk about the histamine bucket. So, quick refresher. You have two different immune systems. They work very differently. Medicine is really good at studying one of them, and it hasn't really studied the other. And that's understandable, because the other one is so incredibly complex that you would basically have to have the power of a god to study it using the conventional constraints of medical research, which, to be clear, are very helpful when it comes to basically every other organ in the body, just not this one. We don't have the power to isolate just one variable that affects the innate immune system because it responds to so many things. So any time we try to do a study on it, we don't know what we're actually measuring. We don't know what, we see consequences, we don't know what the cause is because there's so many variables. It's affected by temperature, barometric pressure, solar flares, the constellations in the sky, I'm not kidding, astrology is the study of the innate immune system. At your menstrual cycle, if you have one, the allergens on the body of every single person that walks past you, every single thing you ate, and everything you think, okay? Your innate immune system is the placebo and the nocebo effect. That's how directly your thoughts affect your innate immune system. So, neurodivergent people and many other people who might not really register as neurodivergent because they have symptoms in different parts of their body instead um, often end up in a state where their innate immune system overreacts to every single one of those tiny triggers and it's not like a learned immune system allergy where it's immediate and very severe it can happen up to 72 hours after exposure and it can be pretty mild. It can be a mild reaction. But when you have a mild reaction to every single thing that you encounter in your daily life, that adds up to a serious problem. But it's a serious problem that's very difficult to find the cause of. Because the innate immune system doesn't leave like a chemical trail the way the learned immune system does. When it comes to fatigue, the cause of the fatigue is that there's not enough blood in key parts of the body. It could be many parts of the body. If you're talking about brain fog, obviously it's the brain. But you can have poor circulation to your lungs, your digestive organs, your muscles, and all of those things can contribute to fatigue. But the cause of the fatigue is the inflammation. It's the constant overreaction to every single tiny trigger. Even if it's not a catastrophic overreaction, it can be a minor overreaction. But having 1,500 mild allergic reactions in one day is not really any better than having one very severe allergic reaction sometimes. You know? This was not the best parking lot to sit in. <clears throat> so that's what causes the fatigue. It's also relevant when it comes to violence. Men have more mast cells in their head. This means it's not uncommon for men to only ever have psychological symptoms of allergic reactions. And if your only allergic reaction symptoms are psychological, no one makes the connection that that's an allergic reaction. But that's what it is. Because of a lot of things about testosterone, allergic reactions are more often channeled into mental illness symptoms. Not always. There are plenty of men who have symptoms elsewhere in their body. But it's not uncommon.
didn't jump when they slammed the door. So proud of myself. Okay. <laughs> As I was saying. <clears throat> so this is relevant to acts of violence, okay? Somebody can wake up, have 1,500 allergic reactions in one day, and the blood in their brain is just going nuts. And they're so angry. And no one has told them why they feel like that, and that it's actually really simple and easy to fix. And then they do horrible things because histamine is a liar. You know how people say the devil is a liar? Yeah, the devil is histamine, okay? And histamine is a liar. You cannot always trust it. Sometimes you can. That's the hard part. Sometimes you really can, and sometimes you can't. So. That's why people need to understand that when they feel that way, that when they want to hurt somebody else, it's because their histamine is really high. And it's not hard to see why humans have a biological mechanism leading to violence because other things have to die in order for us to eat, you know? It's weird because in a lot of ways, medicine has like over-medicalized mental illness but it's also under medicalized it, you know. It's like somehow I want to be really clear on this. When when somebody commits a mass shooting and it gets blamed on mental illness and everybody in the mental illness community pushes back and says like, "Hey, we're not we're not violent and violence isn't mental illness." Like they are right. But m persistent, chronic, nonviolent mental illness and acts of violence are just different manifestations of the same problem, where one is like a, a constant, less severe level of symptoms, and one is like you might, you might only have severe symptoms very rarely, but they're very, very severe. And those are very different things. If you're, like, if you're constantly feeling like a milder level of symptom, you learn how to live with it and you learn how to manage it. If you only have it every once in a while, you don't learn how to manage it at all. And especially when it comes to handling violent feelings, no one ever gives you the tools for that. We just don't talk about it. And not talking about it really isn't going very well. And it makes sense to just reject that part of you because it's obviously very unpleasant and socially unacceptable. But when you reject it, the more likely it is that it's gonna take over at a bad time, you know? Like you need to be friends with it. People are always say that the community is the solution when it an act of violence happens. And there are many reasons why I'm frustrated with that response, but the most important community in terms of preventing acts of violence like this is internal community. When we think of dissociative identity disorder, the common perception of that is that somebody starts out as one normal identity and then trauma fractures it into multiple identities. It's actually the other way around. Every single person starts out with very distinct personality states. That's why a toddler can go from crying hysterically to laughing hysterically and it's totally not even remember. Cognitive development involves these different 
physiological personality states being woven together over time. What trauma does is prevent that from happening. So it's a developmental delay rather than It's a developmental delay rather than like something going wrong. It's just the thing that's, that normally happens hasn't happened yet. And when you have outright dissociative identity disorder, that's a very severe developmental delay. If you don't have outright dissociative identity disorder, it's a less severe developmental delay. Those personality states are more knit together, but they're still not fully knit together. So you can have problems because those states don't know each other well enough without having a dissociative disorder, you know? And so, when you focus on developing internal community and communication between the different parts of you, then when the part that wants to hurt somebody wants to hurt somebody, you know what to say to it.